Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FY23 Earnings Conference Call of Tata Chemicals Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing start and zero on your touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Gavin Deesa from CTR India. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Tony. Good day, and thank you for joining us on Tata Chemicals Q3 FY23 earnings conference call. We have with us today Mr. R. Mukundan, the Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Zari Langrana, the Executive Director, and Mr. Nand Kumar Sirumalai, Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some of the statements made in today's discussions may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainties. I now invite Mr. Mukundan to begin proceedings as a call. Thank you, Gavin. Um, good day and welcome, everyone, to our quarterly earnings call. I am joined by my colleagues, Mr. Nandukumar Chirumalai, CFO, and Mr. Zahi Langana, our Executive Director. I, I will start the discussion with a few key highlights, following which I will request Nandu to walk you through financial performance. During the quarter, the operations were steady. Uh, the U.S., uh, which had some um, elongated shutdown last, last quarter, is gone back to the return, return back to the normal production run rate. Revenue and profitability were robust, with better realizations compared to Q3 of last year. <clears throat> Overall, demand for soda ash continues to be resilient, and we believe the market to be balanced with a bias towards increasing demand, especially with the reopening of China and newer glass applications. A point to be added here, the Chinese inventory is at an all-time low of 2.8 lakh tons, uh, unusually low figure. Hopefully, this will catch up and normalize, but uh, that's the current state of uh, one specific geography. Rest of the geographies are more or less balanced, with India having some uh, so winter-type slowdown, but is going to pick up fully in terms of overall demand. So, I think we are going to be witnessing uh, further tightening as we move forward. Costs are under control uh, in, in the sense that the prices of most of the input energy materials are very stable. They are not increasing anymore. And some of them are beginning to tend down a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> there are a few non-operational one-off items during the quarter, uh, which is uh, um, uh, by which the PAT was impacted, even though EBITDA has been more or less at the same level as last quarter, which is why we wanted to call out what is called as normalized EBITDA, and Nandu will share the specifics of this, and these were flowed through from our joint ventures. Our expansion projects are on schedule. More than that, I think our contracts for 2023 have been finalized right up to December 23. And the flavor of those contracts and the contracting arrangements you will get at the end of the Q4 results. While I will not be making any statement except to say all our capacities are more or less booked and uh, we are fully uh, uh, able to service our customers. I now hand over the floor to Mr. Nando Kumar who will take you through our financial performance. Uh, thank you, Mukundan, and good morning, everyone. Uh, if you look at the numbers for the uh, quarter, we had a good quarter. The revenues for the quarter was at 4148 crores, a 32% growth over last year's Q3. The growth was broad-based with all the businesses and geographies performing well. EBITDA grew by 69% and that was standing at 922 crores for the quarter. EBITDA margins were at 52%, which was 17% in the same quarter last year. Moving on to individual businesses, starting with India, revenues for the quarter was at 1218 crores, higher by 31% compared to last year's Q3. Growth was supported by higher realization as compared to last year's Q3. Uh, the PAT for the current quarter was lower than last quarter's PAT on two factors. One was in terms of in Q2 in India, we had uh, all dividends coming from investments which came in Q2, didn't come in Q3. We also had a one-off kind of a tax refunds coming in Q2, not coming in Q3. These two factors led to the quarter-on-quarter -quarter PAT coming down, while EBITDA is almost on par with last, time's, uh, last quarter. U.S. maintained its momentum with revenue and volume growth of 48% and 4% respectively for the quarter. 
Q3 witness volume growth over Q2 as well. Uh, and uh, we made up for some, we had some shutdowns in Q2 in US for some days. We made up for that in Q3 with higher volumes compared to Q2. The EBITDA margins was at around, around, around uh, 25% as compared to 15% in last year's Q3 due to better operational efficiencies. We also prepaid $65 million of loan in the last nine months time. Coming to UK, we've been able to perform well with revenues improving by 34%. While the uncertainty with regards to energy uh, prices remain, we are undertaking steps towards rationalizing our, our costs and improving the overall efficiencies. As far as Kenya is concerned, business uh, did, uh, did well and had another quarter of good performance with both revenue and profits having good growth over previous year. And I also have to say for the first time, Kenya is debt free. We prepaid all debts in the last nine months time. Regarding Utra and Sirica, Sirica operations were at optimal level and we are working towards increasing the capacity to better meet growing customer demand with better engagement. Additionally, for Utra, our efforts are focused on acquiring customer approvals and increasing utilization at the existing unit. As far as Radis is concerned, the Q3 was largely impacted due to the seasonality of the business. Management is continuing its efforts on improving the product mix and cost efficiencies and widening its distribution reach. As Mukundan mentioned, there were a few one-offs in the quarter. I'll just talk about that. In, in Q3, we had, as I explained earlier, India had uh, the uh, dividend income and the tax refunds in Q2, not coming in Q3. Apart from that, in Q3, there was a particular JV uh, income, JV loss in the quarter. We have two, three JVs. One is in Morocco, one is Tata Industries. So overall, for the quarter, the in the case of Morocco, the prices have come down also on the selling price compared to last year's Q3. Last year had a very good pricing of phosphoric acid. So quarter on quarter or quarter over last year's Q3, the prices were lower, leading to a loss in Morocco in Q3. We also had a one-off kind of a sale of one of the Tata Industries unit during Q3, and that was booked in Q3. We don't expect this to continue in future in terms of the industries uh, being a one-off case in Q3. So that is again return to the normal numbers going forward, we expect that. Um, on a console basis, we had 2119 crores of cash at the end of December, majority in India and the US and Kenya. The net debt was at 4357 crores. During the year, the gross debt was lower due to debts being prepaid and around 15 percent of our debts have been prepaid during the current year. Our console capex was rupees 445 crores for the quarter and 1200 crores for the nine months end debt. With that, I'll close my comments and hand you back to the moderator to open up for the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you to please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have any further questions, you may join the queue back. The first question is from the line of Sumit Kumar from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. My question uh, regarding Soda as India, we have seen a volume uh, of 156,000 metric ton, and a similar kind of volume was in Q2. And the Q2 has a production loss because of plant shutdown. So what was the key reason we are not showing the momentum what we have shown in FY21, even FY22 of a range of 170 to 178 or 80 million uh, uh, thousand uh, metric ton. So it, it, I think it, it, India volumes largely, I think uh, if you really look at it, uh, there's no issue in terms of demand in the market, nor is there an issue of, uh, of as I mentioned, uh, there, there has been some bit of issues with respect to uh, to markets and some pockets of uh, some pockets where there has been a bit of a, a, a slow pickup in the uh, in the marketplace and additional imports which have come in during this quarter. But uh, as such, if you look at the overall, leave the quarter on quarter shade aside because you know you can we can pick whether it's ten thousand more or twenty thousand less. If you leave the quarter on quarter and look at the overall number, right? Globally, the inventory levels are low because the biggest producer, their inventory levels are low in China. But we expect this one-off, uh, uh, one-off imports which had come in, and uh, uh, and also one-off softness in some of the markets, especially with respect to the 
segments market export market which has <coughs> to sort of correct itself through demand from other segments especially glass and uh, detergents going forward so uh, i i would just place it on the, these two elements okay so my second question is uh, when uh, we are talking about recession in the developed countries us europe and if uh, the demand is going to uh, decline from here and we are talking about favorable demand supply scenario in that case whatever scenario currently we have do you think with the recession the whatever consumption we have a 60 million ton there might be a some decline and then the there will be pressure on the margin side in the soda as whatever golden period we are seeing there might be some pressure on the uh, on that side actually we are seeing the reverse we are seeing reopening of china i think we are going to be short of material there is no recession at least signs of recession in us the demand is continuing to be strong even market like uk which has seen very high gas prices we are fully booked and our customers have actually contracted fully with us kenya is fully sold out so i don't think we are seeing any signs as because kenya exports mostly to india and asean so we have actually good amount of understanding of what's happening in markets so really uh, the current situation you are seeing is with uh, china not fully coming back fully on stream in fact if china does come to the on stream which we expect will happen i think the situation is going to be much uh, uh there will be much more demand on top of that i think india is going to have at least uh, the three additional lines uh, and the china is going to launch about four to five solar glass lines in the interval of period and uh, so i i would say while there is a talk of recession we are not seeing recession uh, signs in our demand pattern uh and we are prepared for any any sort of eventuality the only thing we can control is our cost so we are extremely agile and extremely cost focused but all i can say is that that is in, that is that we do in any case but uh, in terms of market side we have not seen any signs thank you the next question is from the line of abhijit akela from kotak securities please go ahead yeah uh, good morning and thank you for taking my questions uh, just a couple uh, one is on the uh, india ebitda numbers uh, you know for the standalone india operations uh, we are still significantly lower than the high water mark that we reported for the june quarter which was about 398 crores of ebitda from india we are still at below 300 this for the second quarter running uh, whereas one of our uh, you know leading peers in india has actually reported more or less stable numbers for the last three quarters so if you could please just uh, shed some light on what might be happening there yeah i think uh, as far as we are concerned i think uh, our our uh, uh, most of our input cost is basically if you talk about uh, uh, coal coke or uh, limestone uh in quarter 1 there would have been inventory of the previous year purchases which would have been uh, and fresh per, fresh inventory would have come in in the current uh, q2 and q3 we don't see any major shift in the cost structure which is remaining more or less stable so i don't want to comment about somebody else i can only say that we are operating at optimum level at the current kind of uh, <laughs> operations and uh, uh, if at all going forward in the next fiscal year some of these costs will ease because we are seeing signs of that happening that that's all i could say okay so but uh, uh, so just to understand should we take this quarter's run rate as a normal number for the india business or you know should we expect to sort of trend back towards the june quarter numbers gradually so i i can only i cannot say beyond the point that it as a cost input cost come down it would go back to probably the june but i think uh, uh, and th- th- that is a process which will happen you you can monitor the coal prices as much as i can monitor understood uh, got it and the other only other thing i just wanted to check about was um, uh, you know while you uh, did mention that we will be able to provide some flavor on the us contract renegotiations only by end of this quarter uh, the news reports uh, out there do seem to indicate that um, the kind of uh, price increases that have been witnessed in the us domestic market are uh, you know are, are at all time high uh, levels um so uh, you know any any color you could provide there at least qualitatively in terms of uh, you know whether it's been a satisfactory uh, contract renegotiation season for uh, for yourself and the industry thank you 
Jaggi, you want to comment on? Uh, yeah, I think I think uh, broadly your comment is accurate. Uh, all new contracts that were entered into, or well, in our case, all have been entered into, are at significantly higher prices. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vivek Rajabadi from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Vivek, your line has been unmuted. We do not have Vivek in the queue anymore. We'll move to the next question from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so first question is on Kenya performance. So if you look at uh, QOQ performance, uh, the EBITDA is down by about 10 crores, uh, but the PAT is down by almost uh, 45 crores. Uh, so any particular reason, and you also alluded to the fact that uh, we have repaid the debt, so probably the interest component also must have been lower. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Rohit, in terms of uh, Kenya, Q3, we had higher tax provisioning because the year is looking uh, good. And that uh, extra tax provisioning is, was made in Q3. That's why the PAT was uh, lower than Q2. Right, uh, got it. And uh, second question is particularly in terms of uh, India demand. So was there any weakness uh, in Indian demand during Q3 particularly because the volumes on a QOQ basis have been flattish? And uh, how are we looking at uh, when we have entered into Q4? Thank you. So I already clarified that with uh, number one that uh, you know in India the pigments and dye stuff uh, sector which takes a bit of soda ash I think they had export headwinds and that has been widely reported even in the media so that has impacted bit of the demand issue also some imports did come in in the intervening period which I think was a one off we don't expect the level of imports with the kind of inventory levels which are in China. So I don't uh, think that's going to continue. So this was a one-off issue and which has led to a bit of inventory buildup in India, which will which will uh, sort of uh, smoothen out uh, as we go through the year. Right. Uh, got it. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Birbal mm -hmm. Bank Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning and uh, thank you very much. Uh, so if you were to understand the UK performance, um, uh, they are going from strength to strength. So the question is, um, how much is this uh, pricing power sustainable and is it some kind of a structural turnaround we are seeing in UK? And the second thought is if you can share some numbers in terms of the India consumption for the quarter for the industry in Sodash and how you see this consumption growing say in the next two years. Uh, in India, and if you can put some percentage growth numbers for the global consumption, that will be useful. Yeah, I think the growth rate broadly, what we are taking, and I'm going to give you give you a range because it's uh, uh, it's a it's a range between 5.5 to 6.5 percent is the broad growth rate we are expecting, uh, especially on the back of some of the new lines that are coming on the screen. And overall, globally, I think it should be anywhere between two to three percent growth rate. That's really the uh, broad uh, uh, number. Because some parts of the world will probably just stagnate, will not grow that much, but uh, other parts like Asia and Africa will continue to grow at a good clip. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the UK is concerned, uh, just to give a color on what kind of contracting has been entered, we have entered for next year what is known as fixed margin contracts. So we will have margin which, is going to con which will be protected in the next year. Uh, this, this year it was a bit of an open contract which was linked to energy, energy cost. Here we have actually pegged it to fixed overall margin. So I think you'll get a better color of that in Q4. And uh, uh, we, we do expect that UK would perform well. Whether it's going to be this kind of number, I don't want to comment on that. But it's going to perform at a steady rate next year. So if you talk about uh, UK fixed margin, is it going to be on a ton, per ton basis or is it going to be on a percentage basis? It, 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 it is it is on per ton basis, please, not on percentage. It is not that if gas prices go two times, you'll get also benefit of certain percentage of the two two. It is on on whatever the pricing of gas is. On top of that, we'll get certain number for soda ash. For soda ash and bicarb. Yeah. yeah, and in the second quarter, there was some mention of some one-off in UK, and uh, you said you will come back. to Is it possible to share what was the one-off? Because just to understand the UK performance. At the EBITDA level, uh, is it something which is 
uh, the normalized EBITDA for second and third quarter, or is there any one-offs? Uh, I will be glad to understand that. I think you you should wait for Q4. You, everything will become clear how that normalizes out. Yeah. I don't okay, want to give any forward looking statement. I've made this point that it's going to be fixed margin and it is going to be profitable. Beyond that, I don't want to make a point. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ranjit from IFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Thanks for this opportunity. Uh, just wanted to get a bit more sense uh, about uh, uh, post the ANSAC exit, uh, how we are uh, looking at the exports uh, from US. So uh, would it also change the mix that we have currently uh, from that geography? And second, uh, uh, how to look at the logistic costs over there? In terms of uh, our contract, they are more or less, uh, more or less uh, uh, next year done, even for exports. So we have we are fully contracted out. As far as uh, logistics is concerned, I think uh, that we have entered into an area and that they will still handle the logistics, but they are not going to handle customer contracts. That is, that is the understanding. Uh, so these contracts are largely fixed price contracts? In US, they are fixed price contracts. They know it's not, it's not a, it's a one year fixed price contract and calendar year. Yeah, and that is what you are leading that should start reflecting from 4Q onwards. Yes, and also in UK it is calendar year, so fixed margin that will also be visible in Q4. Yeah, so uh, could you share a bit more uh, light on the geography mix from that uh, US exports? Is it more towards uh, which? Yeah, it is going to remain more or less stable. If you take a broad brush, I think, of the export volume, which is close to about 45% or so of the volume, I think 50% of that would go to LATAM, 50% to Asia. Sure, sir. That is helpful. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ria Mehta from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to look at soda ash industry as a whole since we're not having any global capacity coming up in the next two to three years. Everything is coming in 2027 in a major way apart from our whatever incremental we are getting. Uh, what kind of realization jump do you see coming forward because of this? Sorry. So, so you're right in what you're saying, Ria. I think uh, we also aren't seeing any substantial new capacity coming up, at least till the 26-27 time frame. In between, you will see some capacity come up, but those will be primarily uh, de bottlenecks. There is talk of some natural soda ash capacity coming up in China. Uh, but that number has been swinging quite wildly over these last few years. Something will come up. Uh, the volume and the time frame is not very certain. So yes, as Mukund mentioned, we are going to see continued, if not complete tightness in the market, the market will continue to remain balanced. A lot of that has flown into pricing in towards the latter half of last year and as we go into this year, and we expect that kind of firmness to continue. Uh, you'll, see some, you'll see some shape, you might see some flavors in various geographies, but we do believe that the trend is going to be positive. Okay, and uh, since China reopening and we're hearing of, you know, their manufacturing PMI increasing to 50.1, uh, do you see that there uh, we might have some export opportunities out there or at least the dumping would reduce to an extent and uh, the domestic dynamics would get better and uh, we can have whatever price cuts we had taken for uh, so dash and domestic arena, we can just recoup that. Do we see such a phenomena happening anytime soon? So very likely, uh, as we could also mention, with the reopening of China, with the new solar glass plants coming up there, <laughs> with a slight relaxation uh, on regulations on the real estate sector there, we are going to see or are expecting to see a rebound in Chinese demand. Obviously, that is going to have an impact on whatever they exported or had available for export during the zero COVID uh, time frame. It might open up possibilities again for, for 
Chinese importing soda, whether those will come out of Turkey or North America, I'm not, I, I would take a guess right now. Uh, and obviously that will ease off also on Chinese import pressure that was that existed for maybe two or three months into the Indian market. I think I think that will ease off as well. Yeah, just to add, I think uh, you would recall last year we had exported from Kenya into China for the first time. So, uh, so we it 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 it, it is it may be possible it will move in the direction. So let, let me yeah. just give again go back to this point. China reopening is a item is an issue to watch. Second issue to watch is that Europe has fared much better than what we anticipated. So I think uh, what we are missing also in this is that uh, while Europe did go through a bit of a difficult period, I think Europe has fared better. Uh, so the pressure which has come on the dye stuff and the pigment segment which I spoke about in terms of exports to Europe, I think that may also be easing off uh, because of the uh, because of how they performed. Their gas storages are good. In fact, the gas prices in uh, UK and Europe have almost come back to the normalized number, uh, well below the peaks we have seen. So a peak of seven pound, it has come down to 1.5 pound already per uh, term. So that's been a bit of a, it's come one, more than one fourth the figure which we saw at the peak. So that explains the broad trend in the world. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I cannot, I, I cannot be, I can't predict the economy and most economists also would not dare to predict the economy. There is still talk of recession, but we are not seeing that in our business. That is all I can say. And just, just sorry, Mukul, I'm glad you mentioned this. Uh, EU just yesterday released their container glass sales figures for last year. And it's at a record high. It's the highest it's ever been. In, in a year that, you know, uh, the R word was being used and is still being used. So that's another indicator. Thank you. The next question. Before we move to the next question, a reminder to all the participants, please enter star and want to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Janesh Sukhia from High Town Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. This is Chintan Modi from High Town Securities. Uh, so, uh, Two questions. Uh, one is, uh, you know, uh, despite having such a great year in terms of demand and also in terms of profitability, uh, if you look at our volumes, have for nine months have degrown by almost three percent. And I understand the Q2 phenomena. I mean, the one-off that we had. But even if that was a normalized quarter, I don't think we would have seen a big growth uh, in the volumes. So that was one. And secondly, from, you know, despite having such good profits, our ROCs are just inching closer to 10%. So would like to know, like, you know, how does the management think about this? And uh, how do you plan your future uh, capital allocations in the long run? So I think well, firstly, on the, on, on the volume piece, just to assure you, we are operating at full utilization almost. We are producing whatever we can. So uh, I, I think... Uh, Unless we expand, I don't expect the volumes to go up substantially. And uh, of course, the Q2, uh, you, we, we, we had extended shutdown. I think that has played a part in this. I, I think that, that's where we stand. As capacities come on stream, that's only when you see the volume uptick happen. So, and uh, that uh, should come in phases as we move forward uh, during the course of uh, the uh, next financial year, uh, broadly. In terms of uh, the... Uh, Capital yeah, cap, capital employed. We we are uh, fairly clear in terms of putting our capital to the businesses which yield a return, and we are using them judiciously. But in terms of ROC, I think uh, that there is a, there's a fair degree of uh, uh, the uh, uh, investment book which we have, which which also partly is attributed attributable to this whole uh, process. But other than that, I think. <coughs> As a, as a business, we are very clear that uh, our return ratios are at a premium to a weighted average cost of capital. Ideally, getting close to, I think, uh, anywhere between 15 to 20 percent broadly. Yeah, and in terms of investment book, any uh, plans to, you know, uh, say monetize few some of the investments? I, I can I will only say no comments and our past history shows that uh, as and when there is uh, 
in, in a phased manner, it has been happening over a period of time, but that certainly is the board's decision. Uh, that's about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranita from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Um, hello. Hi, this is Vivek from Morgan Stanley. Uh, sorry, sir, I dropped off the call before. Uh, apologies for that. And I'm sorry if you may have touched upon this question earlier. Uh, but if you could just give some sense on the demand trends that you're seeing in different geographies. I know you mentioned that you've uh, all your capacities are booked or for 2023. But if you could give some color in terms of the demand trends that you're seeing from your bigger end segments, that would be really helpful. Thank you. So on, overall, the demand is firm, uh, I can only say that, and demand supply situation is balanced with tending towards the tightness, uh, bias towards tightness, especially uh, because China has reopened their inventories are running low. Uh, I think uh, we are uh, continuing to see a very positive bias right across. And I also mentioned that India did see a, a temporary uh, lift with respect to one or two segments like dyes and pigments and uh, also some one-off imports coming in Q3, but that, that is not reflective of the growth trend in this market, which is close to about anywhere between 5.5 uh, to 6.5% growth rate, which we are going to expect, especially on the back of new capacities of glass lines coming on stream. Uh, China also is going to grow with uh, at least five, six more glass lines coming on stream. And uh, Zahir already alluded to, uh, alluded to record container glass production in uh, Europe and uh, uh, we are mainly selling in UK to container glass, no other segment. And uh, lastly, LATAM continues to make uh, steady progress in terms of their uh, sectors too. So really, if you say where, where is LATAM growth going to come from and where is the Australian growth going to come from, it is going to be mostly from lithium carbonate and lithium businesses. The rest of the world is seeing a very strong pull coming from the solar glass business. And uh, the other, other segments are actually holding steady and growing further. So uh, all I can say is the world GDP is going to grow. I think uh, soda ash will be needed and uh, bicarbonate will be needed. All the chemicals we make will be needed. Um, thank you, sir. And just a second question uh, on uh, UK and Kenya. Uh, again, very strong numbers there. Uh, you had highlighted in the past that you could see some normalization in margins. Uh, any color in terms of how you see this uh, trending maybe in the next couple of quarters? I, knew, I know you said that you know operations and demand are still very, very strong there. Uh, but if you still maintain a bit of normalization might happen, uh, any color on how that could trend over the next couple of quarters would be really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, quarter four, I, I, without saying anything, in UK, as I mentioned, we have got a fixed margin and uh, you will get a color of that when we give the results for the quarter four. And uh, uh, this is the Q1 of the calendar year, the first of the contract which is shifted. And uh, so it will be profitable operations, but in normal as you use the right word, but I can't go beyond that. In uh, Kenya, uh, certainly the revenue side is not going to any major change because the prices are holding weight in all markets. So I, I don't see that, that as an issue. But I think uh, uh, the fresh hedges of uh, oil which we are taking, HFO which we are taking, are all coming at the current trended oil uh, HFO prices. So there is going to be a bit of a uh, normalization there also. So I'll leave it there. The next question is from the line of Akul Brochwala from ISL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, just a follow up on UK again. So, uh, for the uh, nine months, we've reported 390 odd crores of EBITDA. So, could you quantify the benefit that we are uh, kind of you know getting from carbon capture unit? Uh, we don't have any figure. Uh, we don't have the figure readily. I think we'll we'll keep that ready for next meeting and. Uh, Sure. Uh, but overall, uh, uh, like, you know, there was this news article stating that you've also entered into a contract with a European uh, uh, manufacturer for, you know, further uh, probably sourcing of low uh, carbon. So uh, uh, what's the sense out there? I mean, uh, are you looking at this uh, very closely in terms of, you know, yielding further benefits? 
It's it's a heads up term uh, agreement uh, for it's an MOU and uh, it's an early phase. I think UK government is very keen on green and hydrogen economy, so we are fully supportive uh, and uh, we will work closely. But it's it, it, it's in a phase of early uh, early uh, contract. Sorry, understanding. There is, what I mean to say by that is that for the vertex to sort of go ahead with their investments, they need customer arrangements and also arrangements from government in terms of support to uh, hydrogen, which is what they are securing as of now. Uh, as it uh, sort of gets more mature, you should look at it. But for next two, two years or so, I don't think you need to bother about this agreement. It's only much beyond that that this agreement will come into play. Understood. Secondly, uh, specifically for uh, North America, like you know, m many of these uh, large uh, manufacturers have uh, either you know uh, revived their capacity or announced new capacity. So, are we also looking at that opportunity in near term or maybe you know few years down the line for adding fresh capacities? Yeah, I think we've already announced that we will be moving from 2.8 to 3.2 million ton. I think uh, that's already on in the works and. Uh, in India, we are going to a million, and uh, there is also 1.3 million expansion happening in India. So, I, I think these are part of the uh, expansion processes as a, on our journey to double our overall, nearly double our overall capacity. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manikanta Gare from Franklin Templeton. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for uh, providing the opportunity, sir. Uh, uh, sir, I remember the, when you were commenting that you mentioned that you have signed the uh, uh, contract. Uh, Madhika, we are not able to hear you clearly. Please speak to the handset. Yes, I'm on handset only. Uh, how how about now? It's still the same. Go ahead, uh, Please go ahead. We try to. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, sir, uh, uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, you are. Uh, Capacity has uh, capacity has been fully booked for uh, this uh, calendar year. Just wanted to understand: uh, would there be typically any take or pay percentage clause in this uh, quarter year annual annual contract that you sign? That's my first question. No, 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 no take or pay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it's hundred percent uh, offtake has to be done. Really. Okay. And, and the second question is. Uh, uh, as you pointed out, and as we have been tracking uh, gas prices in US and you have uh, you know, fallen significantly in Q3 also, but uh, what I see uh, costs going up sequentially in uh, US and UK for us. Is it because of the hedges that we have in place and uh, as a result of which we are not seeing the benefits yet? And uh, if that is the case, uh, which quarter we expect to see the current low gas prices, you know, uh, probably getting reflected? So I think it's the reverse. We've already seen the benefit of edges we place as these edges unwind. It will go to realistic figures of current gas prices, which have tended down. So I think what what has really happened to us is because of the edges, we were not affected by peak gas prices, and uh, they are all normal. And I think we've sailed through that entire process through uh, input costs almost remaining steady. Thank you. The next question is from the light of Arjun Khanda from Kotak Mahindra Asset Management. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for taking my question. Uh, sir, I just wanted some color on a speciality piece. Uh, we understand what's with Rallis. Uh, it's a separately listed entity. If you could just give us flavor, uh, how does one understand the seasonality in this? Because we see profitability uh, change uh, substantially quarter to quarter. And secondly, if you could... Uh, you uh, mentioned in the opening remarks a uh, certain losses in Tata Industries. So, uh, could you uh, bring out that number? What was that uh, loss uh, per se? And uh, how do you see uh, our uh, Morocco uh, Morocco JV uh, pan out given that false asset prices are on the way down? Thank you. Uh, talk about second part uh, first, money in terms of the thing. So, we have this JV uh, loss, 91 crores in the quarter that consists of three or four JVs. And we don't really give the breakup of that in terms of which JV has made how much losses. But it is uh, it consists of the one is the Morocco, where the FOSS asset prices have come down in Q3 compared to Q2. In fact, they made a profit in Q2 and a small loss in Q3. And uh, uh, and in the case of Tata industry, one is the normal, two is the 
uh, one off loss they had in the quarter in industries and we got our share of 9% uh, we hold in the company here and that we don't expect that to uh, repeat going forward so it's more like a one off only for the quarter on account of a business sold by them to, to uh, outside industries going back to the moroccan uh, 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 for asset uh, entity uh, firstly i think by DAP prices and phosphate uh, asset prices are coming down. The issue is going to be that uh, that also reflects back into the rock phosphate prices. So while there could be some course correction period where uh, price fall, but the rock phosphate price may the rock phosphate may be coming through uh, coming in through some internal uh, uh, sorry past purchases as as though as those stocks sort of uh, get consumed, it will also normalize. So uh, generally, these have tended to move in the same direction. So, with some margin expansion in the periods of tightness. So, DAP, FOSS acid, and rock phosphate move almost in the same direction. So, and there's a margin which you earn, and the margin expands if there is a tightness in the market. As far as our view of phosphate is concerned, uh, it also remains as a key resource. And uh, we do believe that the uh, world will continue to see uh, phosphate consumption on a growing uh, pattern as food food production uh, uh, gathers even more momentum in terms of uh, access to high quality fertilizer uh, and uh, the and also in terms of the same topic uh, Arjun, i think look at morocco we had very huge profits last year and now it's again more, now getting more normalized as for the past trend so now what is being seen is the right the numbers in terms of uh, the uh, profits Sure. Uh, just to understand that when you say right numbers in terms of losses or uh, do you uh, see this entity no, no, no. move back to historical prop, uh, yeah, profitability? Yeah, I think the historical numbers of the profit in Morocco in the last sure. many years, you make about 200-300 no. crores profit, profit every year as a company. You Perfect. get one third of that. So that's a past trend. Last year was a, a abnormal year in terms of the pricing shot up and we made a big gain. Otherwise, 200-300 crores is what they make generally year on year in Morocco. Perfect. We get one third of that in our books here. Perfect. Well understood, sir. Sir, and the first question, sir. Yeah, rather the seasonality is like this. I think their uh, best uh, quarter tends to be Q2. And uh, so, sir, rallies seasonality uh, is understood, sir. Just speaking, X rallies uh, is there seasonality to the business? X no, there is no seasonality. There, there is no seasonality in the other business. Uh, you know, uh, during monsoon, some offtake may reduce, uh, which is uh, uh, because. Uh, some of the industries may be having a lower production during monsoon, but otherwise there is no seasonality. The, our tire line in silica is fully booked, 100% utilization. Our food line in silica is about 70%, 75% utilization. That goes mainly into toothpaste and battery separator markets. And uh, the tire line goes to the tire manufacturer and rubber manufacturers. As far as our FOSS acid is uh, prebiotic, the fermentation platform is concerned, uh, there the utilization is about 68% or 70% broadly. I, I think as the utilization moves up, these will move towards positive. The, you know, the DC margin in this business uh, tends to vary between 25% uh, in uh, fermentation and 13%. So I, I think those percentages will keep improving as the utilization improves. So we have to get more uh, customer orders and in, in, increase our uh, sales of these products. That's what we are doing putting effort on. But there is a broad acceptance of these products. Uh, the customer base is good, but I think uh, we have to continue to serve them to uh, get the utilization. Thank you. The next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirbhulbang Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, so on the uh, India speciality, is it possible to give a timeline uh, in terms of when we can see a positive EBIT in your you know, standalone reporting? Yeah, in standard reporting, in terms of uh, positive EBIT, I can only say that uh, we have to scale this beyond their current pilot scale. So, as I mentioned to you, the board has cleared uh, uh, 50,000 ton uh, silica expansion. I think that will take time to come on stream. So, I think at least 24 months to execute that project. We've just finished the acquisition of land and the, the groundbreaking uh, in Karalu. So, Till that time, these are pilot plants, as I mentioned. I think these were to get customer acceptance. Okay. 
and uh, just going back to your second quarter call there was uh, some mention of uh, some one off items in the uk pnl so is it possible to share that and uh, are we to understand that the uk performance in third quarter is without any one off item there is no one off in no, third no, no, quarter no. in terms of uk you, you yeah yeah uk there is the uk is a normal operation in third quarter and the fourth quarter we will be switching to fixed margin for the next call calendar year no, i am referring to what you mentioned in the second quarter call there was a reported one time item in the uk pnl yeah. for second quarter we were supposed to come back on that so if you can there was some clarity on that we used there was some land sold in uk which was a small game booked in q2 ramesh the apart from that there was no other one off in q2 and q3 is without any one offs in in the uk okay thank you very much and all the rest thank you ramesh thank you the next question is from the line of saket kapoor from kapoor kapuri please go ahead uh, namaskar sir sir uh, could you please explain the reason for the increase in power and fuel cost uh, on a q on q basis from 700 uh, i am talking about the consolidated the uh, and the freight and forwarding charges your thought process on this i am talking about the prob- uh, uh, power and fuel cost of 901 Uh, that that uh, to look at the whole thing. See, we got power and fuel has got two components. One is in terms of your consumption of coal and in India and gas in UK and US, and also US consumes coal. So broadly, the quarter on quarter, the gas prices you know have gone up. It's come down now. So that reflects the increase in the gas prices across geographies, mainly in US and UK. Uh, it, it went up sharply in Q3. Now we come down to. Uh, let's say one and a half pounds of thermal in UK. So as compared this, to about four or five pounds in Q3. So this is a there is a uh, there is a pass on in the realisation also. So they, it did not have a dent on the market. This should be understood. Correct, 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 correct. So whatever you're seeing as increase in the power and fuel and freight has been uh, as is coming in the top line. Okay. Sir, uh, as you mentioned that China is having the uh, historically low uh, in inventory. but uh, and and for uh, india domestic uh, domestically we are having some inventory so uh, was was it the this, this inventory uh, being uh, from the chinese only before the their reopening and uh, and if we refer to the chinese uh, prices sir uh, just referring to their website the uh, the chinese prices have moved up uh, more than 110 rmb over a period of last one month so uh, does those prices have any relevancy on how the market is shaping up would you like to throw some uh, share some thought on the same sir in terms of india inventory i think uh, broadly uh, most companies are would hold between 12 days of inventory that has probably gone to 20 days of inventory it's not a big number so i just wanted to leave it uh, there Uh, and uh, the chinese domestic prices moving up and down i think uh, that's a separate phenomenon uh, but all we all all i would say is that uh, the international prices are currently steady and holding thank you the next question is from the line of yogesh tiwari from arihat capital please go ahead uh, thank you sir am i audible yes uh sir my first question is on uh, uk so if i refer to a presentation uh, the sales volume for soda ash has declined on a quarter on quarter basis from about 69 to 63 so what would be the driver for it it's just the timing so it's a very minor decline it's just timing issue nothing major okay and even on a year on year basis it has been a decline so uh any uh, uh reason for the continuous decline like so i think we are fully servicing every all the orders i think uh, that's what we are doing we may we may have cut out some of the low yielding tail which was going to some customers but i think uh, that they are running the business to maximize bottom line uh sure sir and uh, last question on the india business so in november we actually uh, took a price uh, dec- uh, reduction in light and dense soda ash uh, so how is the situation like uh, in india uh, in terms of prices and pricing 
Yeah, I think uh, that again was a bit of a seasonal move which, which had to be, which was made and I think uh, also reflective of some input cost reduction which we were seeing coming in. Uh, but in terms of, uh, uh, if you ask me, uh, uh, as the as the inventory situation eases, which is what we are expecting in the next two months, I think the prices should again uh, be on a firmer footing. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Sinha from Sunday Day Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi sir. Thank you for my question. Uh, uh, just to, uh few things i mean uh, one is as you mentioned that uh, this pigment and dye stuff uh, industry has uh, facing some uh, headwinds because of which uh, we lost uh, some bit of demand so uh, just wanted to understand what kind of uh, percentage if at all could you mention that uh, this industry is consuming as so dash 4 to 5% overall demand okay Okay. And secondly, on the uh, power sourcing, I uh, just wanted to understand that uh, uh, whether we, uh, I mean, how we are looking to uh, go ahead with uh, uh, green energy kind of thing or uh, are, uh, are we looking to reduce some uh, power cost uh, uh, with uh, sourcing for uh, renewable powers? Yeah, I think uh, we have uh, four different units which are on a a different trajectory. UK already is 100% on gas, and I think the next step for them would be to explore hydrogen because they are on the cleanest fuel in terms of carbon intensity already. Uh, and uh, Magadi, it will move from HFO to mostly uh, solar uh, for the energy requirement. And US would move, uh, they are 25% on gas, 70% on coal they would also switch to gas over a period of time and that that is the trajectory they would take india is going to have a combination india will move a combination of uh, uh, 100 from 100 percent coal to uh, re renewable solar as well as to biomass as uh, two two switch few fuel switch options which we will be doing over a period of time okay so any timeline i mean in this uh switching? We, we, we are, our teams are working to reducing 30 percent which means wherever it's 100 percent will go down to 70 percent uh, uh, carbon uh, intensity which means the coal usage should come down to 70 percent of the current level thank you that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to management for closing comments uh, overall, I just wanted to close by saying that uh, we are uh, uh, continuing to see a steady uh, uh, demand supply situation. Uh, next year uh, looks to be uh, in, in a good steady weakness with the reopening of uh, China as well as uh, more, better than uh, expected uh, European performance, especially with respect to their gas storage and their ability to manage through this uh, difficult uh, uh, cost situation that they were facing. Uh, with this, we are uh, confident that our our trajectory, which we had laid out for our business, is on the right path. In addition to that, uh, just adding a further point to the last question, we are also augmenting our efforts both in the area of sustainability and green, uh, going green, and adding a digital layer to our operations. And we will continue to report progress of all these efforts uh, quarter on quarter. Uh, thank you all, and uh, have a uh, Excellent quarter going on. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Tata Chemicals Limited, that concludes this course. Thank you for joining us, and you've been out as connected lines.